Hey guys, welcome to my channel again. Autonomous driving car have emerged as a hot buzzword in the automotive industry in the last several years. Companies from GM, Uber to Alphabet Waymo are working on the technology. However, Tesla appears to have a sizable early lead in the space both in terms of autonomous miles driven as well as monetization of its self-driving technology. Tesla delivered over 900,000 vehicles since inception, and most of them come with a pre-installed self-driving capabilities that users can unlock by either paying it when ordering a car, or owners can add the function via Tesla app once a car has been delivered. Recently, full self-driving price has increased from $7,000 to $8,000. At present, full self-driving package offers a few modest improvements over basic autopilot. For me, the most interesting and useful features are automatic parallel and perpendicular parking and Smart Summon. Smart Summon lets the car leave a parking space and drive toward you in a parking lot. You must watch the car and hold down a button while it does this. Situation this could be useful is when there's extreme weather and you don't want to walk to your car. Or you have a heavy load you need to put it in your car and you prefer the car to come to you. Or you have an injury and it cannot walk very far. There are several videos showing Smart Summon hasn't been great. Car either gets confused with busy parking lot and experience hasn't been up to par. I have even seen Tesla hit various objects and cause damages. To be 100% honest with you guys, I'm actually quite nervous doing this test. So the first thing is, I need to find an empty parking lot. Right? You heard me right, empty parking lot. I want to make sure everything will be in control. So here we go. Once the car is parked and locked, open the Tesla app on your phone. Go to Summon section. Press and hold the Smart Summon button. Smart Summon will only work if you are within 200 feet from the car. In a few seconds, Tesla will calculate the route to get to you. Once you're ready, press and let's start the summon. Just an FYI, anytime you see anything wrong, just let go of the button and the car will stop. In this case, because it's a close intersection and I can see that the car is driving by, so therefore I let go of the button and as you can tell, the car just slows down itself. And I think it's pretty neat is that Tesla actually will turn on the signal. In order for the car to get to me, you need to make a little right UE turn. So as you can tell, the signal was turned on by itself. One of the common smart summon bug that I'm seeing is that the car, when it turns on the corner, the wheel will get scratched. Luckily, it didn't happen. The car actually stopped itself when it's turning because it saw my wife is walking across the street. Once the car gets close to me, it just stopped itself. Pretty neat, I have to say. So that's smart summon. The next feature I think is actually more useful, or actually you could use almost daily, is a summon function. The difference between summon and smart summon is that summon will only go forward and backward. The best use case for this particular summon feature is that when you go to a parking lot that was empty, but once you left the car, you came back, you realize the car next to you parked is super close to you. You don't want to open the door to ding their car, or maybe the opening will be too small for you to squeeze in. So by pressing the summon button, the car can just go straight backward toward you. Now, instead of pressing a smart summon button, just press and hold the reverse button and the car will come straight out.
In this particular situation, I thought the car was kind of acting strangely. I was still pressing and holding the reverse button, but as you can tell, the car slowed down by itself. I wonder was it because the car saw the yellow line in the back and decided to stop. The summon forward and backward function definitely seems more usable, and I probably use that more often than smart summon function. What do you think? Next up, the auto park. The way that tests the auto park for the perpendicular parking is that they will actually park between two cars. He actually never reads the line. That means if the two cars are both outside of the line, Tesla will only park in the middle, so therefore your car actually might not park right between the lines. Tesla will find a parking spot for you when you are driving slower than 15 miles per hour. You will see the P sign next to your car once your car passes the parking space. So once you see it, slow down and press the P, and it will engage the auto park function. <laughs> As you can tell from the actual recording, we were super nervous. The car almost looks like it's going to run into the car parked next to us. Once we got out of the car, as you can tell, the car actually didn't park between the lines. It actually just tried to park between the two cars. And also, if you look at the back, the car could go back further, but it didn't. But it's not end of the world, and I think I'll give this particular test a B. Well, we want to be fair to Tesla, so we decided to try this test again and find a different spot just next to us and see how it will handle this time. As you can see from this clip, while I was backing the car into the space, there is a car coming my way, and within a second, the car was able to head in directly into the parking space, while Tesla slowly back into the parking spot. Now, there is a lot of discussion and arguing between should you back into the space or go straight in. From what I read is that back in the parking space actually is better because when you're getting out of the space, your car is facing the front and you have a better view of what's happening in front of you instead of backing out of parking space. The con of backing into the parking space is that when you have a lot of stuff you want to load, what are you going to do? Are you going to push your car, go to the back of the car, so therefore making loading stuff much harder? Luckily, Tesla does have a frunk, but is that big enough for you? Well, so what do you guys think? Overall, I think the added feature for full self-driving for today, it's not worth $8,000. Maybe in the future it will be. As for the smart summons at Auto Park, they are working, but not excellent. Especially the smart summon, which have a lot of issues. Enough what I think. What do you guys think about Tesla's full self-driving technology? Is it worth $8,000? Would you feel comfortable using it? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click on the like and subscribe button. I'm making videos for fun and during my free time. Your support helps out this channel more than you think. And that is for now. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon.